What improved your life so much, you wished you did sooner? I stopped living my life just waiting for the weekend. When you work five days a week and have just two off, it's not good to be always waiting for those two days. You can plan something meaningful or fun every day, even if it's just a small thing. Edit, wow, thanks for all the awards. I'm glad others have found this comment helpful. This is a good one, but hard to do for some people. I'm up at 4.30 a.m. to get ready for work and don't get home till 6 p.m. That gives me three-ish hours to eat dinner, shower and unwind before I need to go to bed. Unfortunately, I spend my entire week looking forward to the weekend. Same, plus my micromanaging boss sucks all possible joy out of the work day. We can't even drink coffee until our lunch break and God forbid you have to use the bathroom while on the clock. Weekends are what I live for these days. This is actually a life hack. Trust me. Life is a marathon not a sprint and you must find a way to enjoy every day. At the end of the day you should say it was a great day or day well spent. I had someone tell me, life is a marathon not a sprint but the better advice I got was, life is not a race at all. It's more like river rafting, and the point is that you're there with people you love spending time with and you're enjoying your surroundings together. Of course there's rapids sometimes and still water sometimes and usually you know where you're going to end up, but it's about the experience not the destination. Got a divorce. To talk about my depression. Don't be too afraid to seek for help. Flossing. Actually, I use a water pick now, now my hygiene and cleaning visits are a breeze, and I haven't had a cavity in years. Also periodontitis is strongly linked to a whole host of diseases like dementia, https colon slash slash www.ncb.nlm.nih.gov slash pmc slash articles slash pmc 8297088 slash and heart diseases, https colon slash slash www.health.harvard.edu slash heart health slash gum disease and heart disease the common thread, I guess flossing is a hugely underrated health intervention. On a similar note, flossing before brushing. I used to brush, then floss, but flossing then brushing is definitely the way. It allows you to get a better brush in between your teeth since any food particles should out. Learn Spanish. Now I have a lot of amazing Latino friends and I got a lot of great gigs and opportunities because of it. I came here to say this. Learning Spanish has changed my life. I have friends all over the world now. I'm going to Europe for the first time this year. I feel like the world has opened up for me. Now I'm back in school learning how to teach English to Spanish speakers and I'm learning French. Plus it was a huge confidence booster. Spicy rice and tuna middle.5 mo. A go. Not everyone can afford this but, moving closer to work. My commute went from 45 miserable minutes in traffic glaring and hatred at the tail lights in front of me to a pleasant 15 minute bike ride. I got an hour of free time every day and better health. Pandemic did me a solid on this one. Lost my job of 20 years due to it. Two hours of commuting every day which had just risen to three hours. Took a year off then found a perfect job round the corner from my house. Four minutes walk. Absolute game changer. Took a 20% pay cut but we sold my commuting car and with the price of fuel what it is we're actually considerably better off. The three hours saved commuting means extra time with my wife and kids. I'm very happy. A 20% pay cut but you are also getting 20% of your time back, assuming 8 hour work day plus 2 hours commute, plus saving money on travel costs. Just before I got the boot I was leaving at about 6.30am and home at 5.30pm. Now I leave at 8.25 a.m. and home at 4.20 p.m., plus home at lunchtime. It feels shitty saying it as I know many were not as lucky but the pandemic changed my life significantly for the better. It's amazing what a break in your standard routine and some time off and you were able to plan your life better. You were running on fumes for your real life before as you were always on the road or at work. Dude I've been a full-time, 50 hours a week, Lyft driver for over two years and I just got a WFH with great starting everything and I couldn't be happier. I still got a drive for a couple weeks but I'm done with the road. Got a proper diagnosis. I think a lot of people that for years question themselves what's wrong with me? When they finally got diagnosed it's a big relief and changes a lot in a better way. Me too. Getting diagnosed with ADHD at 36 and then following through on treating it was one of the best things I could have done for myself in the middle of the pandemic. 
I didn't even realize that I was doing a lot of things in my life on hard mode. Bachelor degree at 47 years old. Master degree at 50 years old. Doubled my salary in 4 years, from just getting by to on track for retiring at 60. Do tell. What is your degree in? What inspired you to pursue at 47? Exercise every day. Anxiety and depression are much easier to manage, and I got some confidence I haven't had in years. It even helped me make new friends. Same. I recently joined a nearby workout center and made three new friends in just two weeks. I literally knew no one around where I live and this felt great. Got a motivation to go there daily as well. Low impact cardio. Fuck I love to run, but it destroyed my legs. I can swim my little heart out smile. Swimming is great. Lot of fun, refreshing, and good exercise. Believe it or not, ice hockey is really low impact on your joints too. I can't run without pain and even biking seems to tear up my knees, but hockey always makes me feel better. By destroyed your legs do you mean something like shin splints? Just curious because I love running as well but have had the same problem as of recent. Audio books. Commutes, walks, yard work, chores, watching kids at the park, lounging around etc. are all way better and some of the highlights of my day. I even listen when I fall asleep and it helped me sleep faster and gave me something to enjoy if I have a random bout of insomnia. I'm about to go camping and know I'll sleep like garbage and enjoy every minute of laying in a tent not sleeping. When I was told that I would lose my eyesight it made me pay more attention to how beautiful the sky was. I can still see and I enjoy watching the clouds on a level I can't even explain. Edit, thanks to everyone for the love, you all have made me very happy. Drinking water. Simple but know so many who don't drink enough it. It's refreshing and revitalizing. I actually have a story I used to live off of Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper by the 12-pack box. How I stopped. Got into a major fight with my GF at the time, now wife, who was a major health nut. She threw out my soda saying stop drinking that shit. I professed my love for the soft drinks and my free will to do so. She pauses for a moment, narrows her eyes and asks me a simple question. What do you love about soda? After thinking about it, outside of the sugar I said the bubbles. She got me a soda stream with flavor syrup I could reduce to a drop and that was the last time I had soda. To this day she claims she saved my life. Finally talking with my, then new, family doctor about my misuse of decongestant nose spray. He told me it's a common issue and that there is help. 1.5 years of tapering off and two surgeries later I used bad nose spray for the final time. I could kick myself for not talking about it for more than 20 years. Edit, I am working my way through the comments and questions, I posted it before going to bed and didn't expect much reaction, so, the addiction's name is rhinitis medicamentosa. So it's not an addiction like alcohol, in the way there's a reward system in your brain, but it's a self-sustaining process, you have an infection and take no spray. If you do it more than a few days the reason why you took it at first is gone, but these sprays mean the nose clogs again. So you take no spray against no spray, which got worse and worse over the years. Many asked which spray I took, I largely gave up talking about any names in this regard, by definition of stereotype every Redditor except me is from the US, so your stuff has different names in the store than the German stuff I took. The nose spray I used is sold in Germany as Nasic which has xylometazoline as main active agent. Some others asked about the surgeries, so here is more about the process, my new family doctor sent me to an ENT for help. He mentioned that next to the effect of the addiction, there's often a background to it. Turned out my concha were enlarged and my septum deviated. I must have broken my nose once, the ENT insisted it must have happened although I didn't know it. Maybe when I fell off my bike as toddler or so. Both limited how much air could pass and made it even more prone to clogging, which was boosted by the misuse of NASIC. The concha were cauterized, so a small intervention, about 30 minutes plus a few days sick leave, the septum deviation was corrected via full anesthesia surgery in the hospital by the ENT plus two weeks sick leave the process took so long as the ENT started with tapering off by flooding the nose spray with hay fever and sea salt ones, effect, reducing bad nose spray from 5x a day to 1-2x, then cauterizing after which the nose needed to heal, reducing it to 0-1x per day, before the surgery. As the septum deviation is done in hospital I needed to wait a few weeks until I could do it, and afterwards the nose needs some weeks to heal again. Never used it, 
How did it affect you in the short term to begin and sustain an addiction? You have a stuffy nose, you spray it up there, it is unstuffed. You do this a few times. By this point, the initial cause of the stuffy nose, allergies, cold, whatever, is gone, but the withdrawal from the spray is now causing the same problems, so you have to use it more, which makes it worse, so you use it more, etc. You can just stop using it and suffer for a bit and then things will often go back to normal, or you can get a steroid-based spray from a doctor which will help relieve the symptoms without causing the same addiction problem. To be clear, it's not addictive like heroin is in terms of brain chemistry, it just causes a problem which it also solves, which results in more frequent use. The way it gets you is it works so well and so fast. You go from clogged nostrils to clear breathing in a minute or so. First time, and for a couple days, it works for 10 to 12 hours. It is only meant to be used for 2 to 3 days at most, I find I can use it for 3 nights while not using it during the day and it never causes the rebound problem. But if you keep using it you get rebound congestion, it only works for a short time and then you have worse congestion than ever that is only relieved by using more spray. This congestion is caused by the spray, and so to get off of the spray you have to deal with your nose totally stuffed for potentially weeks until your body works it out on its own. I started flower gardening. Really relaxing, you will see results all summer, lots of successes and failures but failures bring improvements. And I listen to audible books while I'm at it sometimes. Especially great if you have a desk job. Edit, it's so nice to know so many are enjoying gardening. I had no idea it would be a Reddit thing. I've been growing produce on my apartment balcony for the past couple years and it's been a fun learning experience. Plus eating food picked a whole 15 feet away from your kitchen is kinda cool too tongue this year is my first year attempting some tomatoes wish me luck. Quitting drinking is the best thing I've ever done for my mental and physical health and it's done nothing but improve my relationships. The last year and a half have been the best I've ever had. I'm on day 19. Congratulations fellow newbie. Day 4 for me. We've got to start somewhere. Keep up the hard work. Daily exercise. It doubled my energy for an hour out of my day. And that's just the benefit you get now. You have no idea the dividends you'll collect on that as you age. The key to aging gracefully is in staying active. I have worked with seniors for years in the capacity of wellness slash exercise and you can absolutely pick the ones who are and have been consistently active out of the crowd. Not just in exercise form but in all facets. Absolutely. A few years ago I had a client in their mid-70s who basically never exercised and they were pretty much confined to a wheelchair and had a diminished quality of life. This past year I worked with a couple who were both 81 years old and made a commitment to staying active most days of the week, doing resistance training, mobility work and balance exercise for many, many years. They still were going on hiking trips and cross-country skiing adventures while I was working with them. In conclusion, as a past martial arts instructor told us the best way to stay in shape is to never get out of shape. It's one of the more important things that those studies about how exercise could add 5 years to your life. Never includes. Staying active might add 5 years of length to your life, but it'll add another 5 to 10 years of quality life on top of that. And honestly, even before the health problems correlated with lifestyle disorders start kicking in you will still probably have an improved quality of life. You promise? I keep meaning to start, but I never have the energy. It took about 2 weeks of being sore, another 3 weeks of limited progress, and then I realized I didn't need naps in the afternoon. I'm able to get so much more done now. It doesn't have to be crazy cardio, just something every day. Exercising is something of a flywheel in that the more you commit to working out regularly, the more energy you will have. It's hard to get the wheel started but once it's moving the momentum will help carry you. When I went for my first run I was absolutely exhausted and then moderately sore for a few days afterwards. It kinda sucked. But once I had recovered I noticed that the next run was easier. And the next one even easier than that. Then you notice that your pants feel a bit looser than you remember, you're able to move a notch in on your belt, you're able to climb a flight of stairs without being winded. And when you miss a day, you actually feel sad because without realizing it you started to like your new routine. Start out with a 30 minute walk. See if you can jog for 5, 10, 15 minutes if you're worried. You'll be amazed what you can do. Doing at least one chore a day. You would be amazed at how well getting something done, even if you hate it can fight back against certain depressive mentalities, particularly the ones that convince you you're useless or are a burden. 
This is great advice. For me a triple 30 worked wonders. Every day spend 30 minutes cleaning slash chores, 30 minutes exercise, and 30 minutes of self-improvement which could be anything, for example practicing guitar. Get home from work, knock off the triple 30 in 1.5 hours, and oh man the sloth after that feels so good and so earned. And what's 1.5 hours? Nothing. Highly recommend it. Edit, not only does it annihilate your housework, its biggest effect on me was kicking the ass of my depression and anxiety. It's not gone, but so much more manageable. Edit 2, thank you for the awards. I am absolutely delighted that this resonated with people. It made such a difference for me. Somehow I've never heard of this, but I think I'm going to start doing this. Thank you. If it helps at all, I use the 5 minute rule. If it can be done in less than 5 minutes it is a requirement, like wiping my counters down, clearing the coffee table, a couple jumping jacks, a short stint of yoga, a quick chapter in my current book etc. It really helps me prioritize things especially when I don't have the motivation that day. I will often find that I end up cleaning my entire kitchen, or finishing a book, or anything but making it seem smaller helps me. I like this too. I used to roll with a vague accomplish three things a day mentality, but I found myself giving me intentionally brief or simple tasks so I could go back to fucking off. At least with the 3 by 30 idea you're committing an hour and a half to some physical, mental, and life improvements. I do this, too. I call it not having a zero day. As long as I did something, even a shower, it wasn't a zero day. Thanks for this reminder. Today I worked as expected. Found time to also do laundry and dishes. Made the kids dinner. I still feel guilty that I've been on Reddit for the past couple of hours. But I did real, actual work work, and housework. I could have done more, but I didn't do zero. And that's something. So don't beat yourself up if your one or two things is all you can do for a day. It's infinitely more than zero. Used to procrastinate and do them all at once, but you're right doing a one or two each day keeps the place clean which is great for mental health. I started with picking one thing up and putting it where it belongs every time I leave a room. Bringing out dishes, picking up clothes, throwing away trash. Learning to set boundaries and say no. Yes. It feels so wrong at first. People get so angry when you quit being a doormat. Yeah they get so mad because they don't expect it. Usually they continue pushing boundaries and switching tactics to make you say yes. That's when you cut them off. It's difficult to push through that guilt and not give in when you have done that for a lifetime. I'm working through this with my mom at the moment. I say no. She escalates, throwing the whole manipulative textbook at me. I'm actually stuck between saying no to my family, me and my wife, and our future plans for the next year, and my mother, to a midweek dinner for my brother's birthday. It's obvious to me that my life is more important, so I can't not say no to my mom. But she absolutely cannot accept that no. It's insane how much she's escalated it. It's lucky I don't need to rely on her, or my dad, for anything. They have absolutely zero leverage. They're throwing out years of social capital to try and get me to get my wife to give up on our long-term goals, the next day after the dinner my wife has a big exam that she needs to pass. If she passes it's a work step up, and we are waiting for that to have kids. It's so important to be able to do this, and while most people realize the benefits for yourself, it's so much nicer to have a partner you know will say no, and set boundaries. An ex of mine was really worried about messing things up and would rarely say no, or set boundaries even though I was constantly pushing her to set them and I had to be really slow and pay attention to her as she tried to hide any discomfort so I would know. It stemmed from her past and how she was taught to act growing up, but we were able to work on it and she was much better later on. While it's always important to watch out for your partner's reactions to make sure they're comfortable anyways, having someone who tells you when and when they don't feel comfortable makes a world of difference. All is to say, don't think it's selfish to say no and set boundaries, it's much better for everyone, especially yourself. Have a good day smile. I used to get so hurt when my husband didn't want to join me in something. We finally talked about it and I decided it was because I didn't know how to say no to something he wanted to do so I expected the same courtesy. It took him saying you can say no to things too. For the light bulb to turn on. If I ever declined something growing up, it was considered rude or disrespectful to the person offering. If I ever declined something growing up, it was considered rude or disrespectful to the person offering. This. I would get punished or blamed on if I refuse to do something or if it's out of my comfort zone. Now that I'm an adult it stills feels a bit awkward to say no, 
even by itself since it's considered a full sentence, but I'm continuing to work on it. I recently said no to something at work and it was so liberating. My boss was was surprised because I almost never do but I knew I didn't have time for the project and I knew it would not be done correctly. Came here to say this. I struggled with confrontation, saying no, speaking up, and simply sharing my personal opinion in fear of what would happen if I differed from others. I started therapy last year and it helped me realize that I feared things that didn't even exist and I was really limiting myself for no reason at all. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button for more content. I post every day and I'll see you next time with more stories.